Last week, there was major Russia space news. Same with this week. We just learned that Russia now says it will leave the International Space Station in 2024. And this comes after not only Roscosmos, but also NASA are making plans to transition post the ISS era. We also learned last week that Dmitry Rogozin was fired. <laughs> He is out of Roscosmos. He has been replaced by Yuri Borisov. You'll remember Dmitry Rogozin is extremely outspoken, especially on Twitter. He was dismissed July 15th, and this followed months of controversial public statements about Russia's involvement with the ISS following the invasion of Ukraine. This announcement doesn't come as a complete surprise since Roscosmos has been threatening to pull out of the ISS for months now. Russia stated that Western sanctions will, quote, destroy Russian cooperation aboard the Orbital Lab. Yuri Borisov was quoted saying the decision to leave the station after 2024 has been made. And check out this tweet from retired NASA astronaut Scott Kelly. He flew to the ISS on three of his four space flights, and he spent almost a year aboard the orbiting lab on his final mission. He wrote on Twitter that he believes the Russians will try to stay as long as they can afford it because the ISS program gives Putin needed credibility domestically and internationally. In his opinion, Russia's announcement is a more vague, open-ended bluster. The way that the ISS is designed means that the U.S. and Russian segments are interdependent. It's not clear to what extent the U.S. could maintain its facilities if Russia will leave the partnership. The ISS partner agencies are currently only committed to operating the ISS until 2024. NASA plans to begin shifting toward commercial space stations at some point following the end of the program. Now, there have been discussions to extend the life of the aging laboratory past 2024, but nothing is concrete yet. NASA has argued that the ISS could be safely operated until 2028, but Bill Nelson, NASA's administrator, has said the station's tenure could be pushed to 2030. Even President Joe Biden has directed NASA to aim for 2030. Now, currently, the station costs between three and four billion dollars each year year to operate. As of the recording of this video, NASA still has not issued a statement in reference to Borisov's comments, nor have any of the other partner agencies for the ISS. And these remarks come less than two weeks after Roscosmos and NASA reached a long-awaited agreement to exchange seats on spacecraft traveling to and from the ISS. NASA astronauts will fly on Russian Soyuz craft and Russian cosmonauts will ride on the SpaceX Dragon capsule beginning this fall. I spoke to Jonathan last week. This was, of course, before we got the news today that Russia does indeed plan to pull out as of 2024. But here were some of his comments about the recent shakeups in the space industry. Let's talk about the Russian shakeup developments. There's quite a few things. I mean, uh, Rogozin gone. Gone. Yeah. Don't let the door hit you on the way out, Dimitri. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, Rogozin has been a figure of fun, si you know, since the 90s, I think. I mean, he's, he's, you know, one of these people who just continually, he's a blowhard, right? And, and he just comes out with these crazy things that often don't, even though he's the boss, was the boss of the Russian space agency, they don't get turned into actual policy. Right. You know, because again, someone further down the chain has a quiet word with him and goes, no, we can't actually do that. <laughs> and, uh, and so, um, you know, and so he was an embarrassment to the Russian space program. Um, he was a political appointee. Um, he never had any real connection to space. The replacement, Borisov, we don't know so much about, mm -hmm. but that's sort of good news in the sense that the fact that we don't know so much about him probably means he's not quite as insane. <laughs> um, uh, and, and we do know that he's got a long history in the military and uh, as deputy defense minister and things like that. I, I, I'll say this, I, I fully expect him to be every, mu every bit as much a fan of Putin as Rogozin has been. Right. And right. he's going to support the Ukraine war every bit as hard as for goes in. But maybe he won't do it quite as much in NASA's face. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's the difference, right? Um, you know, he won't necessarily paint Big Z on the uh, 
cargo ships to the ISS, although he might paint them on the on the side of the the, the military spy satellite launches. Right, uh, right. And and so that I think that's going to be the difference. Is is the hope is that he'll be, you know, just less of a personality maybe, mm-hmm. and and more of actually doing the job and making sure things run smoothly. Now that does not solve any of the deeper problems of the Russian space program, uh, that it is cash strapped, that the Ukraine war means that no one wants to play with them anymore. I mean, the, the ISS is still going ahead as a partnership, but nothing else. Um, the uh, European Space Agency has formally backed out of some more things. Uh, Rogozin then said, okay, we're, we'll back out of the European robot arm on the, on the space station which is now bringing the breach into the space station program for the first time. I don't know whether that's actually going to happen or not. That may be one of the things that triggered Rogozin's removal even. Mm. Uh, um, uh, right, because the Russians desperately need the space station partnership to carry on bringing money into the Russian space program overall. Um, but I think in the long run, despite the fact that they've just come out, they've just come out with, you know, Here's the plan for the Russian independent space station of the future, the ROSS, the Russian Orbital Space Station. There's no money for that. I mean, it's it's purely PowerPoint for this, right? It, it, it's not going to happen in any reasonable time scale. Uh, and and so I think, independent of the personalities at the top of the Russian space program, um, they they have a real long term structural problem. Uh, that unless the Russian economy tr- turns around drastically, or they, you know, they do a North Korea style prioritizing of missile programs over everything else, which in Russia is plausible, uh, then, then I think you know the, the Russia is is barely now in the top tier of space countries, right? It used to be the lead launch yeah. country. China's going to take that role. And Russia's going to, you know, so the, so the top space countries, right, we have, uh, I count Western Europe as, as one, right? Uh, they, they have an integrated <laughs> aerospace industry. And there's America and there's China. And there was Russia. But now they, I think they're heading toward the second tier with India and Japan. Wow. I, I think that, that that's the danger. And, and sorry, 10 years from now, I think that's where they'll be. And, and so, yeah, it's getting rid of Rogozin is past time, but it doesn't solve the other line. Interesting. Do you think that China is going to be number one? Is it, is it already? It's not already number one. It depends how you measure it. In, in satellites launched, the U.S. is number one. Yeah. In rockets launched, China and the U.S. are jockeying for first place, even with the large number of SpaceX launches. Um, okay. And, and so, because, you know, obviously Elon launches a bunch of satellites on one rocket, right? Uh, and so, uh, and the Chinese haven't been doing that at the same level. So, so in terms mm-hmm. of numbers, in terms of the sophistication of the technology, the U.S. is still well ahead. Right, right. So I think you have to give the U.S. the number one position, but you might end up, I could see us ending up in the position we were in the 80s, where in the 80s, the Soviet Union launched many more rockets and many more satellites uh, but the U.S. one, that was because they only lasted for two weeks and the U.S. ones, you know, were much more sophisticated and much more capable. And so, you know, it was hard to make the quantitative comparison. But in fact, the U.S. was ahead, even though in numbers it looked like the Soviets were ahead. Right. Uh, and I think we might end up in a situation like that with U.S. and China at some point, certainly in terms of number of rocket launches. Uh, uh, there's every possibility that China will will, will do that. Um, <clears throat> so. So it's going to be interesting to watch, um, and, and but certainly I think China is surpassing Russia as the competitor to the U.S. in space, right. just as they are in you know the bigger world picture. I think. Yeah, totally. How how significant is this partnership that was announced with NASA and Roscosmos for flights to the ISS? Well, you know, it's just a continuation, right? It's a continu- It's saying the ISS partnership is still alive. Yeah. That despite everything else, we're going to carry on operating the space station together because 
us. We really got no choice uh, other than shutting the space station down entirely. Right. Uh, and so if you're gonna if you're gonna have Americans and Russians on the space station and not you know have a, like a checkpoint in the middle or something, then you might as well go the whole hog and and share rides and all of that stuff. Right. So it's consistent with the general position that we hate the Russians, but we're, you know, we're, we're best buddies when it comes to the ISS. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Which may or you know, may make no sense, but that's, that's the position of both the U S and Russia right now. Yeah. When I put up that video, like kind of touching on these things, a lot of people in the comments were like, we shouldn't have any cooperation cooperation with Russia. We shouldn't have them, you know, we shouldn't, they were not happy to hear about this agreement. Do you think that they're just not understanding like reality with why we need this? I mean, I think your, your, your other choice, right. Is to abandon the space station and shut it down. Um, Which is a legitimate choice, but it's a big one. Right. And so I think if you're not going to do that and there's no, there's no current appetite in Congress or in the administration to do that. Uh, and so then, all right, we, we're doing this with the Russians. Let's do it with the Russians and, and carry on, right? There's no, there's no point in half-assing it and say, oh, we're not going to give you rides, but at the same time, do, you know, do like joint spacewalks when you're up there, <laughs> things like that, right? It just... And it just gets silly. So, so yeah, I, I think it's, uh, I think it's unrealistic unless you, you have a really big policy change about yeah. not completing the space station at all. I, I saw one idea floating around to keep the ISS maybe as like a museum someday. Yeah, it- I, I, I don't think that's realistic because it's going to take a lot of money just to keep it safe. Okay. Right, you've got to keep reboosting it. That's not cheap. Uh, you've got to keep it oriented, right? If it starts tumbling, then it could break up, which would be bad. So, so there's, you've got to do a lot of maintenance to keep it going, and mm-hmm. that's really most of the cost. And and actually using it once you've done that is sort of a relatively small part of the cost. And so. So it makes no sense. I just recently had a great weekend in Las Vegas, checking out some of the outdoor adventures there. I've gone to Vegas a lot in my life. In fact, I did get to check out the new boring tunnel uh, passenger station at the Resorts World. So I'm making a video about that. That was really cool. Unfortunately, I didn't get to do a demo, but I went to Vegas this time to explore the outdoor scene. I've been to Vegas a lot as a kid and even as an adult and, you know, done the whole people watch watching and poolside uh, hanging out, but this was a trip specifically for climbing and outdoor adventure. And oh my goodness, um, if you want to maybe have your hands sweat a little bit, check out this video. I'm just kind of, I don't know where to go for the feet. Yeah, I had a lot of fun on this route and I'm making a few more uh, videos about my adventures. So if you wanna check out my other channel, that's where I post more of my non-space related stuff. Again, I'm working on a lot of content right now and hey, next week is the Tesla shareholders meeting. I can't believe that. Time really is flying, so I'm gearing up for that trip as well. I wanna say thank you so much for all of the support. Happy Tuesday. Thank you to my Patreons. We have a lot of new support for the channel, and I just can't tell you how much it means to me. So thanks for making my dreams come true and helping me make more content for you. I will see you in the next video.